Audi, Imar Talim here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Blue Spring by Tai Matsumoto. Now, before I start uh, reviewing this, um, there's just a couple of things I've got to point out, and that is this is the very first work that I've read or seen from Tai Matsumoto. He's done a popular uh, manga called Black and White, um, which was later adapted into an even more popular uh, animated film, Tekan Kinkreet, um, both of which I've yet to watch or read. Um, I'll definitely need to fix that in particular with the anime film, because, you know, that's actually a pretty cheap film to get now. I still don't know why I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, besides that, they've made another anime series based on a manga series from him, and that is Ping Pong the Animation, which, as far as I can tell, is getting good reviews and decent viewership. Um, but my overall point is that this is the very first thing from Tai Matsumoto that I've ever read um, or seen. That's the best way to put it. Now, I usually begin off these reviews explaining what the story is, um, but the thing is this is actually a short story collection, um, so there's no overall story arc. Uh, now, there is a common theme to them all, and that is kind of disenchanted high school students. So basically, these high school students, um, they've kind of lost faith in the world. They have, you know, feel like they can't achieve their dreams now, um, and so, they're going down a kind of a different route in life. They're they're becoming either physically aggressive or far more likely passive aggressive. You know, with vandalism, um, with uh, graffiti. Actually, there's a lot of graffiti in this, and I'll get onto that in a moment about the way that Viz has handled it, um, etc., etc. So we are actually seeing how these students are now coping with their lives and. The thing with this short story collection is there's, okay, there's seven overall short stories. And the best way to put it is that some of them are better than others. That's the best way to put it. My favorite is actually a short story called Mahjong Summer. And basically the premise of the story is that there's this group of uh, high school students who, um, they kind of had dreams for baseball, but they didn't do well at all in their most recent uh, baseball tournament. And they're kind of discussing now over a game of Mahjong, um, kind of how they're going to progress in life, uh, what they have to do, um, should they give up a baseball or continue it, etc, etc. And it's actually, like, not too much actually happens in that story, but it's actually really, really interesting. Um, it's quite an engaging story. It really makes you think. Now, on the other side of that, you have Peace. And Peace... It's just not a well-written story. It's um, it, it progresses far too fast. We don't get to know the characters at all. Um, it has a very anticlimactic ending, and it, it just doesn't work that well. And then everything else is kind of in between, um, ranging from good to not so good. So that's the problem with this uh, short story collection. It's it varies in quality rather significantly. Um, now artwork-wise. The art is definitely where most people are going to see the difference between this and other mangaka. Uh, basically, Tai Matsumoto has been very heavily influenced by uh, European artwork, like, you know, European independent comic artists, um, to be more specific. And that means that he has a very different look in comparison to other manga. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean, the characters are more... Uh, how can I put this now? They are more anatomically correct, but even so, they are still exaggerated. Um, there isn't pretty much any use of shading. You know, what shading there is, um, there is very little of. Um, so, in general, you have this really heavy contrast between uh, blacks and whites. And the actual character designs are, um, as I said, they're more anatomically correct, but they are exaggerated in terms of mouth. Or sometimes they're exaggerated in terms of eyes, um, it, and it, it's just a—it's a really, really different-looking series from um, other manga. And I guess it depends on whether or not you can, you know, accept this different look. Now, I have no problem with it. Actually, I think at points it actually looks really, really interesting. Now, there's no point that I would argue that actually looks beautiful, um, but it's definitely got a very different look to it. Um, that uh, definitely adds a lot of flavor to the story, that's the best way to put it. Now, when it comes to panel work, a lot of the paneling 
it feels a lot bl a little bland like it's just kind of normal rectangular squares etc etc and it progresses kind of in that fashion a lot of the time so quite often it feels uh, very bland now contrast that there's actually these moments where all of a sudden the panel work becomes absolutely amazing in terms of diagonals like if you just simply take a look at this page and um, you'll see what I mean the panel work on that page is just superb it has a great sense of flow um, it feels very dynamic um, but that's kind of only every so often in general it's the whole square rectangular panel work and that's it so overall the panel work um, it suffices for in general and then the actual you know those pages where he just kind of cuts loose with the panel work is just absolutely amazing so um, artwork wise this is definitely a very good art um, piece now from Viz's treatment of it um, this is before Viz uh, put in the whole uh, signature uh, series and um, basically it basically used to be called editor's choice and Basically what that means is it's normal Tonkaban size. If I get out my trusty Yatsuba, um, it is basically the exact same size as Yatsuba, so standard Tonkaban size. Um, it is about 200 pages, um, so it's a little more than your normal uh, page count of 180 pages approximately. And uh, Viz's treatment of it is slightly problematic, just slightly annoying. Um, what do I mean by that? It means that the way that they've handled the tr uh, the actual um, translation, in particular of the graffiti or the sound effects, basically, take a look at this page. There is a lot of graffiti along the page. And what they've chosen to do is basically at the bottom of the page to give the panel number and then what it's said. So I find that quite distracting that you're reading through the page and then you get to the bottom and you have to look back up. Um, to the previous panel, um, etc, etc. It just, it reminds me of those kind of glossaries that Viz used to do, which, um, you know, just didn't suffice. You know, I would have preferred either Viz, you know, do what they normally do, which was, um, you know, replace the sound effects or the vandalism or whatever with actual, you know, English translations, or they could have just gone with the Yen Press route, which was, you know, to have the normal, you know, graffiti uh, artwork there or whatever or sound effects and just have the English translation just right underneath it um, and that way it wouldn't cut into the flow of the story so I think Viz could have uh, handled that a lot better and then you know paper quality wise it's your kind of standard uh, you know Viz quality maybe slightly better um, but beyond that it's just you know it's kind of normal-ish uh, Viz paper quality and uh, besides that I guess no, there isn't really too much more to say. Um, in case I haven't made it too clear yet, people are going to have different opinions on each of the short stories. Some people are going to like, um, you know, what's done in peace. Um, some people are not going to like what I really loved about Mahjong Summer. Um, it's quite interpretive, is the best way to put it. And uh, that makes this, in particular, very difficult to review. Basically, the best way I can describe it is it's about high school delinquents, basically, and um, their troubles, and, you know, they are passive-aggressive, um, sometimes that breaks out into the physically aggressive, and, um, you know, it's dealing with all these different aspects of society, you know, growing up, um, you know, mafia, crime, um, love, etc., etc., um, so it's basically very hard to actually nail down will people like this or not. Now it's, you know, it's a, it's decently cheap. So I don't really see why, you know, people can't just buy it, check it out for themselves and see if they end up liking it or not. But if you haven't, if you looked at that artwork and you've gone, I don't think it's for me. Or if I've described the story and you're kind of like, it isn't for me, then you can probably give this a skip. But for people who definitely want something different from your standard, you know, manga um, artwork, um, or who are interested in kind of, you know, those kind of growing up stories in manga, uh, particularly from a Senen perspective, um, then yeah, definitely give this a go. Um, I, I, I certainly won't be able to tell you guys what you'll, be, what you'll think of it. And therefore I would love to see in the comments below um, what you actually thought of the series 
Um, and, you know, maybe you could give what your favourite story from it was and what your least favourite story was. Um, yeah, but that's basically my point. So, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye-bye.